and welcome to 2023. It's a very blustery, wet 2023 here in the UK. And in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about how I do goal setting and explain some of the ideas. This can be used in work and life and I use the same process really, whether I'm doing these for work goals or whether I'm doing them for personal ones. I just maybe change the frame of reference just a little bit and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. The video you've seen in the goals, they're not all of my my real goals. If you're interested in the goals that I've got set for 2023, then why not join me in the newsletter because there's a special edition of that. Piggybacking off the retrospective and the annual review that I did just before Christmas. So if you're interested in that, check out the newsletter because I go through the retro, basically deconstructing the year and pointing out areas that I've maybe not done as well as I'd like to have done and obviously accelerating those particular areas, but also sort of um, um, celebrating the wins, celebrating some of the stuff that I did well. Now the important part about that retrospective and annual review is it feeds into these goals. These goals should, for me, for this year, be aligned to those things that I've got to get better at. And it's the same in business. What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to get better at? Because that's what the goals should focus on. So first off, a hat tip to managertools.com. That's manager-tools.com. Because They've got an extremely good way of taking away these SMART goals. You've seen those SMART goals. I'm not a fan either. And leaving just the M and the T, which is measurable and time bound. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, I add an extra bit to this. So I add the word NO, which means no outcomes. And we'll talk about that in a minute because it's quite important if you want to live, I guess, a peaceful life where you're not constantly at the whims of things that you can't control. So first off, I like to use some sort of frame to frame these goals. And for me, that's the pillars of life. I've done a video on this. In fact, it was the very first video for this channel where I talked about the pillars of life. And for me, there are six of them. There's educational personal development. That's number one. Number two is health. Number three is family. Number four is finances and money. Number five is impact on society. And number six is productivity and effectiveness. Now, they're not necessarily in that hierarchical order. In fact, actually, the number one priority is health. Because without that, I don't have anything to give anybody. So I use this as a frame. I use those as the sections to then explore. Now, you saw in the video, my preferred method is yellow legal pads doing mind maps. But of course, whatever works for you, it could be digital, could be scraps of post-it notes, whatever. So then it's about breaking out those things, you know, health, for example, what am I going to do to get healthy? Now, this is where maybe we should talk about the MT no, the measurable, time-bound, no outcome-based goals. Because what's important here is to set goals that are inside of your control. So the first one is measurable. Goals should be measurable. You should be able to say whether you've achieved the goal or not. Now, this is really important because what I see a lot of people doing is things like, I want to lose 20 pounds this year. I want to make 300,000 pound a year. I want to have a million subscribers on YouTube. These things are outside of your control. You can't control the world in the way that many people will claim to. What you can do, though, 
is you can control the systems, the productivities, the routines, the effort, the energy and attention that you give a particular goal and the outcome should take care of itself. Now that's why I've got the no outcome. What I don't want to be doing is setting goals where I'm trying to manipulate the world to do something that I have no control over. So let's look at the YouTube for example. I've got a goal this year of producing and publishing 25 videos on the channel this year. I was aiming for one a week, but that's just too ambitious. I just don't have time to do that. Now, will this translate into two, 3,000 subscribers, 20,000 hits of video? I've got no control over that. What I do have control over is whether I publish those videos. And then I'm gonna let the world decide that no outcomes. I'm hoping it's gonna be very positive for this channel, but who knows? It might just be a monumental waste of time, but I'm doing this goal for a number of reasons. One is because I enjoy making videos. Number two is really it's a legacy. I think of this as a channel that my kids could watch in the future and see how ridiculously stupid their dad was. But number three as well, I'm doing it to share advice and information and hopefully that appeals to people. So I have no control over whether people watch these videos, but I do have control over the energy and attention that I give them and the reasons why I'm doing it. So it's measurable. Have I published 25 videos by the end of the year? Now, if I break the year down, I should be aiming for two, three a month to try and get to that number. And that'd be a really good measure. I can measure that as I go and I can measure whether or not I achieved my goal of 25 videos for the year. Time bound. This is the second part, measurable, time bound. It is time bound. I've given myself a year. The time bound is the middle of December when I do my annual review where I've got a goal of 25 videos. I've either hit it or I haven't and it's time bound. Now, like I say, you can break it down in two or three a month. I don't want to be doing 25 videos in the month of December just to hit that goal. That's just ridiculous. So it's about breaking that down and then building the routines and the habits and the systems to get that done. So it's measurable, it's time bound, but I'm not wedded to an outcome, which is 1,000 subscribers and 25,000 views per video. That's outside of my control. So let's look at another one. And like I say, if you wanna see the exact goals that I have, then join the mailing list and you'll get access to the goal setting uh, newsletter, which is coming out today as I actually record this video. And you'll be able to see the exact goals that I've got and how I'm measuring them, how they're time bound, and how there's no outcomes up, uh, associated to them fluff that bit. So let's take another one, health. So health for me in my annual review was pretty poor actually. It was a really pretty shocking year. I've not felt my best for a while. I'm probably drinking a bit too much. I'm certainly not eating clean. I'm definitely not doing the exercise routines that I had. Now I could set a goal that says lose 20 pounds, you know, get super fit, blah, blah, blah. But that's an outcome that I can't control. What I can control is eating clean, doing things like red january where every day in january i do some form of exercise and i can measure that it's time bound i've actually extended red january to red february and red march with a plan to start doing skiing on the ski erg again and then in march I actually start lifting weights again once my shoulders and my back have recovered from a gentle buildup of hopefully just walking every day in january to skiing to then getting back into weightlifting now I could set a goal that just says go straight to the gym, lift those weights and get back to it, but I will injure myself and that's not good. So as you can see, it's measurable. January, February, March, I have these goals. Hopefully they'll sustain into a routine that can carry on through the year and they're time bound. And there's no outcome associated to it other than get up, do the thing, continue. And hopefully if it all works out and I'm eating clean and I'm uh, strict about no alcohol for January, which is another goal, and I do the exercise, then I'll lose weight, maybe. Maybe I won't, but certainly I'm hoping to feel better. So I usually have a combination of some very, very easy short-term goals. Like one of them is to donate X percentage of my profits from this channel, from the books, from the courses to charity. I can do that. Straightforward, simple, calculate it, donate it, task done, goal achieved. Achieved? I think I've just created a new word there, a combination of objective and achieved. Others are more long-term, so for example, the 25 videos, that's gonna take me all year to do that. I've got other things like booking holidays with the kids and my wife, super simple goal to do, just gotta find a holiday, book it, hopefully we've got enough money to do that. Other things like, you know, contributing more money to the pension, again, easy to do, um, assuming that I have the funds, is to just siphon off a little bit of money, put it in the pension pot and don't worry about it. Setting up routines, habits, automated stuff, 
discipline where possible. So that's really the goal of this. And really James Clear summed this up quite nicely, and I've been doing this for a while, is set yourself a goal, then forget about the goal and focus on the system of productivity, the system of work, the system of automation that allows you to get to that goal. Now the reason this is super powerful in work and life is we have no control over the outcomes of some of the stuff that we're trying to achieve. Fate could intervene, all sorts of things could go wrong, things could scupper. But what we do have is control over our routines, our habits, and our discipline. And if we do this, what I often find is, certainly in work, is we achieve way more than we could ever have anticipated if we set ourselves a target and an outcome. So for example, if we're disciplined about the way that we do work and we optimize the system and we look for waste and failures in all of those processes, the chances are we're gonna achieve way more output way more happiness, way more engagement than we could ever articulate in a goal. Focus on those systems, focus on the routines, and the outcomes will take care of themselves. So as you can see, I've got my six different areas that I focus on. I usually end up with about two or three goals per area, sometimes more, sometimes less. Sometimes a mixture of short-term and long-term, sometimes just long-term, big, hairy, audacious goals. You see, these six things, they kind of define who I am, and when I let one of them crumble too far, I become lopsided, I become disjointed, I become sort of misaligned with myself and the world that I occupy. So for me, it's about doing the review, looking at the things that went well, continuing to focus there, but actually looking at the things that didn't go so well and really doubling down on those areas by setting goals for this year that help to counter balance. It's always a tension. When I'm focused on something, I'm not focused on something else. So this tension is, Really, uh, this process is about bringing that to the forefront of my mind, making it extremely conscious that I'm focusing on this pillar and therefore I'm not focusing so much on this one. So there you go. Brainstorm those goals. Um, go through them afterwards. You noticed in the video I went through with the fountain pen and put an asterisk next to the ones that I really have to achieve this year. And then the ones that I didn't have to achieve, I'd put no asterisks next to it. I'd like to, I'd love to. Of course, in a perfect year, I'd get everything done. But those things are less important than the ones with the asterisks. Now, what you'll probably spot is the ones with the asterisks are all related to health, family, and money to some extent. They're all related to things that are really important for me as an individual. And the productivity stuff, if I achieve these videos, 25 a year, awesome. If I do that at the expense of my health and my family, that's not good, that's not success. So really it's about defining your success, using some sort of frame and the pillars work for me, there's many, many others if you search the internet, and then going through and brainstorming what is it you wanna achieve, but make sure that you make them measurable, time bound, and try if you can to get rid of those outcomes. Let's not be wedded to the outcome, let's instead focus and love the process, enjoy the system, and the outcomes will likely follow. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe to the newsletter. It's getting a lot of love this year. It's one of my big goals this year. There's going to be a paid version where I'm going to be breaking down how to release agility, how to build cultivated companies where you know people are enriched by working in them. And that's going to be a paid version. It's going to be every two weeks. The alternative two weeks, still going to be the free version of the cultivated newsletter. There's going to be all sorts of extra goodies for paid subscribers, like access to the personal knowledge management system that I've got, all sorts of other stuff, some audio kind of things coming for you as well. There's going to be some really good value, I hope, for a very small fee, hopefully. But please join that because it's got the annual review that I did. It's got the goals, all of my goals for this year in this week's edition. And it'd be nice to have you in the community. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.